So, here we are again. Another impromptu video about horror games that I didn't necessarily plan to make. In my defense, even though this may be becoming a trend, I didn't intend on making this video and my hand was technically forced by Adobe, though inadvertently. Um, Adobe's most recent release for Premiere Pro has an issue with GPU accelerated uh, playback, so I actually can't see what I'm working on most of the time, so I have to instead opt to a video like this with minimal editing and simple voice commentary, probably some lo-fi in the background. I don't know what I put in the background here yet, so I don't know. Hopefully this goes out well for everybody. <laughs> Uh, regardless, today I wanted to make a video discussing a post I saw from GameSpot on Twitter, which was a uh, discussion piece about what we would want to see in an RE4 remake. So, um, just to set this up a little bit, assuming you don't really follow Resident Evil or Capcom in general, uh, Capcom is the company that's been responsible for the RE series since, I think, like 1995, 97, spanning countless generations and consoles. Um, recently, though, they've been sort of reviving the series following Resident Evil 6 with uh, Resident Evil 7 and then going back a step, essentially, and remaking 2 and 3 for modern audiences. Um, what that basically entails is that they have, one, revived the survival horror genre to some extent, two, proven that old stories are still good so long as they're given a slight modern facelift, and three, that they have interest in their original landmark titles. Um, speaking on landmark titles, Resident Evil 4 is considered to be one of the better, if not the best Resident Evil game, at least prior to the release of Resident Evil 7. I don't think very many people would argue that. So considering that so many people are interested in Resident Evil 4 as its original release, um, it's not impossible that they would, you know, Capcom specifically rather, would see that and think, yeah, we could remake that, and since that isn't out of the realm of possibility, it's worthwhile talking about what exactly we would want to see from that. So, if we were to get a Resident Evil 4 remake, I think that there are three specific things that Capcom should look at when they go into developing that. And I think that that uh, would consist entirely of redoing the combat, redesigning the, or rather, not redesigning, but overhauling the uh, environmental designs, and including sort of, I guess, spice of life details from the RE2 remake and the RE3 remake into an RE4 remake. Specifically, the weapon parts system, I think. I think that is the most potential, personally. Um, so firstly, let's break down combat. Just to give everybody a frame of reference, Resident Evil 4 had a combat system that consisted of two phases. I don't want to say phases because they didn't like follow one another like consistently every time. It wasn't like uh, XCOM, for example, is a movement phase, like an attack phase, a retort phase, you know, it's not like a RTS kind of thing. I mean, more or less, like, you have to control two different states independent of each other and decide when to swap between them. Um, you had a movement state and an aiming state, and you could only attack enemies in the aiming state, but this meant that you could no longer move, you couldn't really move the camera around the same way. It meant that you had to decide when it was the best time to attack and the best time to evade. And obviously a system like that is pretty effective for a survival horror game. It means that you have to be careful when you're facing up, you know, facing up against five, six, seven enemies at a time, which isn't uncommon in Resident Evil 4, especially later on in the game. Now the problem comes that when we consider modern game design having moved away from systems like this, it's kind of laborious and clunky uh, compared to a lot of modern titles, especially when you consider how they've redone combat for Resident Evil 2 and 3. So. If they were to go into making an, uh, a remake of Resident Evil 4, that would probably be the biggest thing they have to focus on. I think taking the combat system from RE3 uh, and putting that into an RE4 remake would make for the best uh, benefit. Having played RE3 myself through a couple of times, I, I feel that that is a really good fit. Um, I mean, it introduces movement while aiming at the same time. The, it has the same um, uh, unlimited durability knife combat. The only thing I think wouldn't work, actually, is RE3's dodge mechanic. Um, if you haven't played the RE3 remake yet, essentially there's a dodge ability or a charge ability, depending on which character you're playing, that allows you to evade um, enemy attacks and uh, it gives you like a small window to attack back in at like an accelerated rate so you could like fire extra rounds at a zombie or whatever is attacking you, try to take it down. and. It's, it's, it's a cool combat system, but it, it's not perfected for the style of gameplay we get uh, in the remakes, and I don't think that introducing it to an RE4 remake would be the best idea. <clears throat> particularly because RE4 has these mini-bosses, particularly these larger, like, kind of giant enemies that are called El Gigante, 
they essentially like they're they're big. They don't have like fire like firearms or crossbows or torches or axes or whatever. They have like these giant clubs that are basically just trees. Having to try to maneuver around, aim and shoot, and also factor in the dodge ability when it isn't something that Capcom has spent a ton of time refining would most likely just make for a like very frustrating experience. Uh, one of the worst parts, at least for me, from the RE3 remake was trying to dodge enemy attacks, and even though they are telegraphed, you can't tell like what way you should move. The windows for like actually dodging a an attack are like really slim and hard to wager because it's just not a refined system at the moment. And I don't think that forcing it into RE4 to try and make it better is the best course of action. I think it would be better to simply like make DLCs for three, test it out there, and then maybe put it into four. But honestly, it could just that whole part of it could just be skipped. Just include the movement and the aiming, like the aiming and shooting from three into four and you got it i think like it's just the basic principle we need to look at here um and i think that th what's important to note too is that re4 is a remarkably difficult game because of the way that it plays um i i think that that added level of strategy that's required on the player's end does make a significant impact in terms of how you play it that being said though i don't feel as though um adding a more simplified modern combat system would significantly detract from that RE2 and RE3 make up for, like, the relatively modern kind of simple design that they use their, uh, rather not simple, but simplified concept that their combat is based on by introducing, you know, enemies that can get back up, you know, limited ammo supply despite ammo crafting and things of that nature. Um, there's ways to work around it, and I think that Capcom has shown a pretty successful track record with that so far. Um, when it comes to RE4 specifically, I'm not entirely certain how they would include any kind of metric to balance out the relative ease that combat would have, but I'm confident in their ability to figure it out to some extent, whether that be through like the introduction, introduction of more mini bosses or more enemies or more limited ammo, whatever it may be, they would eventually find a way to make it work. And we're talking about that as well, you know, making things work and uh, pulling the entire project together if they were to make it. Um, I think combat and level design are going to have a pretty key impact on that simultaneously, you know, the overall quality of the project that we get. Um, so moving on to level design, Resident Evil 4 has a chapter-based system, and between chapters, the landscape that you occupy changes pretty drastically, relatively quickly, but introduces, like, previously seen environments back in here and there with new challenges. Um, think like Resident Evil 2, where you, you're you starting off in the police department, you leave the police department, you come back, things have changed a little bit, you know, your equipment has changed a little bit, the enemies are a little bit more different, there's new challenges here and there, that kind of thing. It, it does the same basic principle, um, although I feel as though it might, I think the best way to explain it is it kind of gives you more of the same challenge in a different context, and that shifts it around. What makes that so important is that they're willing to reuse, like, areas and levels, and those levels have a very specific set of rules. So, because it's a chapter-based system and it change, you know, the environments change so drastically, uh, there's a very keen, I suppose, uh, focus on specific details, and one of those is actually verticality. Um, verticality, essentially, what I mean here is that, you know, there are multiple levels to each area and I don't mean in the sense that like uh, the RE2 remake has where there's different floors to the building and they're kind of sectioned off from each other I mean in a single level that can be occupied without going through doors or accessing a new area completely are available to the player and enemies as well uh, for exploration so uh, the best example of this that I can think of and I wish I could show it to you right now is actually in the first area where uh, you come across this village, it's filled with enemies, and you have to basically just survive an onslaught of these villagers that are trying to attack you for invading their space, I suppose. I don't want to try to give too many details and spoil it if anyone hasn't played Resident Evil 4 and is watching this video, um, but that's the general gist of it. What's most important about this is that there are a couple of houses in this village, obviously, and one of them has an accessible roof, meaning that you can actually climb a ladder, go up there, and walk onto it. And when you start the combat, there's actually a sentry up there who can throw axes at you. If you shoot him, he'll fall down. That's the key factor here. Verticality means that you can 
not only evade enemies by going up to different levels and jumping down, you can also use that ledge to your benefit by weaponizing it essentially against enemies. That's pretty key. And I don't think that's really expressed as well in many other Resident Evil titles, especially modern ones too. I think modern ones have a more limited puzzle slash maze-like design when it comes to areas that have more than one floor or different levels of height. Resident Evil 4 kind of pulls it all together and introduces the fact that, yeah, they're up there, you're down here, but neither one of you are really safe, and you should take that into account as you continue to play. That's really important, I think, and especially, you know, as you get later into the game, the level designs become more complex, and there are harder puzzles, and there are more hidden treasures, you have to do more to find hidden treasures and things like that. It plays a significant role. That level of detail adds life to what you see around you. And if they're going to make an RE4 remake, they would have to make sure that that comes into play when they connect all of these areas like they have in 2 and 3. Um, that is to say that RE2 and RE3, their remakes, include fewer like level transition type things. You're not walking into a door and seeing an animation going into the next area. You are walking directly into the next area. Um, seeing them take into account that this new considerably larger map than other Resident Evil games has to be not only interconnected, but also maintain that level design uh, is pretty important. And I think Capcom honestly has a pretty solid lock on that portion of their design. Um, I, I see no reason really to think that they couldn't do it. I would just want them to understand how significant that is. You know, the interaction of the player with the environment as well as the enemies that occupy it. I, I think that that could be something that's pretty easily overlooked because there are specific moments throughout the original release of RE4 that are made possible by that inclusion of a dynamic living environment and to strip that away by trying to just recreate it might overall damage the quality of a remake. That isn't to say I think that they couldn't do it. I firmly believe they could. I just want to make the note that it's a more important part of it than people might initially think and if they were to just change all of the layouts and give us something completely new that somehow accomplishes the same thing that's also fine i just want it to be stated that that is the important part of it i think and would be considerably detractive if they managed to fail uh, finally more specifically or rather as into going into more sm more of a small detail than an overarching you know experience wide uh set of i guess rules um, Spice of Life stuff. Um, Resident Evil 2 and 3, the remix specifically, uh, include different systems that allow for, I guess, more variety in, uh, re uh, not replayability necessarily, but more variety in terms of gameplay. Um, that specifically comes into the inclusion of things like weapon parts, which are essentially weapon mods uh, present throughout the game that you can find mostly through puzzles, occasionally through like hidden means like an RE3. Uh, and then they make, you know, weapons, you know, play differently, control differently. They give you advantage. They change the way you play ever so slightly. It's it's a pretty good system, actually, I think. And it, it shows that they thought it through to that point. It's like, hey, you have this pistol to begin from the beginning of the game. Do you want to make it a little bit cooler? Here's some stuff to do that with. I think that's a really good idea because it just means that you aren't getting bored of the arsenal that you have at your fingertips. Resident Evil 4 is a little different initially because while I have not played the original uh, Resident Evil 2 or 3, I'm re reasonably confident in stating that that was not a system that they previously had. And it's the same thing for Resident Evil 4 to an extent. There's no crazy complicated mod system prevalent in that story. However, RE4 does do this slight sort of modification station kind of thing with their merchant system. And uh, essentially the way that that works is that as opposed to being able to find weapon mods strewn throughout levels, you instead can purchase them from a merchant in the game using money that you find either by killing enemies or breaking crates uh, or selling treasures that are hidden throughout the maps. Uh, and that money also has, you know, multiple uses. You can use it to increase the size of your inventory and uh, upgrade the raw stats of your guns. That's generally the gist of it. You know, the focus wasn't on modifying the weapons. It was on making them better by upgrading them. And those upgrades unlock as you play the game. That was the substantial difference. They don't play any differently because you've done this. They just make them more powerful so they're still usable. I think that including a fully-fledged, you know, modification system would be 
not only super interesting to see from a game like that, but also really efficient, not efficient, I suppose, but extremely effective at making the gameplay in Resident Evil 4 substantially more enjoyable. If not enjoyable, at least more varied. It means you could, it would mean that you could play through the game a couple of different times in different ways, using different weapons and different arsenals, saving money, spending more money, upgrading, downgrading, all this different stuff. It, you'd have more control over it. I think that control would make a pretty substantial effort uh, in terms of making, or rather allowing that control would be a substantial effort in improving the game that they already have. Now, I, I did state that Resident Evil 4 did already kind of do this. Um, there are a couple of weapons, for example, the uh, the Red 9 pistol and the, I think the, I don't know what it's called. It's, it's a bolt-action sniper rifle that do have modifications. Uh, they're a stock and a scope, respectively. Like I said, it's extremely limited. It doesn't give you any, like, enhanced creativity over the arsenal that you have at your fingertips. It's just instead a system that is included in the game that doesn't necessarily influence the way it plays to a crazy powerful extent so seeing that become a more full-fledged controllable like player-led system would be really interesting and i think ultimately increase replayability and the creative license given to players on how they decided to play the game uh, now generally speaking i think there's a lot more that can be talked about in terms of a resident evil 4 remake like uh, voice acting, costumes, uh, whether or not it would be, you know, New Game Plus kind of, you know, New Game Plus ability, uh, whether or not it would have, like, a shop system from Resident Evil 3, or if it will have DLC. There's a lot that can be taken into account here, especially when you consider that, like, the original release from RE4 had, like, time trials of different characters. There's a lot to take into account, and when you think about it that way, there's a couple of different ways that Capcom could considerably take it, but I think the best way to do it is to simply take what they have, give it some new stuff, some new mechanics rather than new everything, I guess, it's like to not overstep their bounds and give us what we originally liked just with a new coat of paint without basically overlooking all of the problems that could be solved from the original RE4 uh, release. So that being said, that's basically what I wanted to talk about. Hopefully that's at least somewhat sensible. I, I genuinely think that talking about this kind of thing is super important because, like I said, we're currently three for three on a revival of Resident Evil games, and they've all been good, or at the very least passable, depending on how you feel about Resident Evil 3. So seeing them take one of the best titles in the series and remake it is not only exciting, but also motivating. If we want them to make a good game, we need to keep talking. Because if they've already done it three times, it means that they're listening to us. And if they're listening to us, what we tell them we want is paramount to what we get. And the more we speak, the more they know, the more they know, the better they can make it. And I don't know about you guys, but I really want this to happen, and I am extremely ready for Regenerators in 4K. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this quick little video about Resident Evil 4 and its potential for a remake. I know it was a little weird, and I know that it's not really up to the standard I'm trying to hold based on the, you know, like one video I have up, but either way, I'll hopefully have a chance to revisit this later on in the future once Adobe gets its stuff figured out and I can see what I'm working on again. Uh, in the meantime, though, I do have more videos planned as always. What you're seeing right now is going to be a quick screenshot of uh, what my videos folder looks like and all of those videos are you know being worked on concurrently so it take a while you know, there's the script writing and everything to go into it but they are coming out at some point so if you want to see those go ahead and click the subscribe button down below and if you enjoyed this video like it and share it with some friends on twitter facebook whatever you want to use and thank you guys so much for watching have a dreadful day